Yo, what's going on people? It's your boy Ape Hancho back at you again with another video. And so for this next one, we've got to head over to Leicester, where a retrial has recently wrapped up over a murder case that happened a few years back. But again, because a retrial has recently just gone ahead, it's back in the headlines once again. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take you through the timeline of events. Then we'll look at the reasons why a retrial was heard. And then obviously we'll get into the recent trial. So it's going to be a bit different from normal because I just don't see the point in going through the first trial seeing as it basically got thrown out. So in the early hours of the 27th of March 2016, nearly five years ago now, Emma Jane Magson and her at the time boyfriend James Knight had been out separately drinking with friends. They then meet up at a pub in Leicester city centre at about midnight and then take a taxi home. The pair then begin to argue in the taxi coming from the city centre going towards Emma's home and I do believe from reports that they had been arguing about either one being unfaithful. The taxi driver had then asked them to get out of the vehicle and they did and at some point after getting out of the vehicle CCTV picks up James pushing Emma which causes her to fall. As the pair made it to the house located on Sylvan Street in Leicester a short while later it's believed that Emma had made it inside whilst James was heard at around 2.30am banging on a front door I'm guessing to let him in. It's believed James attempted to enter the property and after Emma lost her temper she strikes out at him stabbing him in the heart and left lung with a steak knife. Although both organs had been hit, it was only inflicted by a single stab wound. Neighbours would be awoken to sounds of an argument with one of them hearing James shout, quote, my heart is bleeding. James then falls to the ground but manages to get back up and falls back into the street. Emma at this point hides the knife in a neighbour's bin and also takes James's bloodied t-shirt into the house, I'm guessing in attempts to hide what she had just done. James's brother lived nearby and heard the commotion with what was going on outside. He realised his brother had been on the floor outside but didn't know that he'd been injured. He, along with another neighbour, helped James inside, but they left because, again, they were unaware of his injuries. While James lay dying inside the house, Emma would go upstairs, change, and would then call emergency services at around 3am. This is the call she made to operators whilst her then, at the time, boyfriend was dying. What an ambulance. Ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened. Um, I don't know. My boyfriend's here and he's making weird noises. I don't know what's going on. Right, what was he doing to me? What, what, I don't know, he's got a lot of blood on him. James, look at me, please. James, James, just look at me. Uh, just James, just turn around, please. I don't know if he's turning around or he's got some old him. James, turn around. James, I've got the ambulance on the phone, please. Just turn around so I know what's up with you. James. But listen, the ambulance is on the phone, so can you please turn around or let me know what's going on? Please, turn around. He's not doing... No, he's not making noises, I don't know. No, he's doing fine, he's just come home, he's come home to me. Yeah. So I've been out all night, and then he's come home to me, and then he's just collapsed on my floor. And then now he was fine about up till five minutes ago, and he's just started making noises. Now he's stopped, and I'm on the phone to you. And is he awake and breathing and... Yeah, he's breathing. Okay. Um... No, he's breathing fine. It's like he's asleep, but I don't know why he's making the noises. I don't know if he's doing it for my sake or for what. Like, James? James? What? Now it's just like he's asleep. Right, and so do, you want, do you want an ambulance to come and take him to the hospital? But I don't know, I don't know if there's some old room or he's just playing me about. <laughs> but now I'm on the phone too, he's just shut up. Right. What should I do? I can't tell you, I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> then I don't know what you want me to do. The only thing I can do is just send an ambulance to come and take him to the hospital if that's what he wants. Yeah, do that please. Right, okay, so uh, just bear with me then. Um... James, an ambulance is coming, okay? I'm really breathing that normal, but is ambulance just kind of okay? What's your address? How old is it? Um, 26, 27, born in 99, James. 
Is his eyes open at all? Is he awake? Well, to be honest, it looks like he's sleeping, but it ain't how he normally sleeps, because I live with him, so it ain't how he normally sleeps, that makes sense. Right. He looks like he's had a fight with someone. Okay. James, I think he's ignoring me on purpose if someone is real. Right, okay. <sighs> Sweet. James, police are on the way. He's <laughs> just breathing. Right. You can hear the police are on the way. No. He's not on there. All right, well, uh, we'll get someone sent over to him. Um, it's been arranged. I mean, it might take a while, so I do apologise. It's bank holiday weekend and we're getting absolutely... Bad. No, that's fine. Don't worry yeah. about it. I mean, if you can... Just keep doing well, it. Well, it looks like he's just asleep, but you know what? It's a bit worrying because normally he gets up and gets in bed. Yeah. Um, has he been out drinking all night? Yeah, but I'm a bit honest, I think he's took some drugs. Oh, okay. I don't know, though. How's he, how's he lay at the minute? Is he on his front, back, side? How is he lying? He's on his front at the minute. Right. He's on his front, the head's on the front, and the hands are on the front. So what do I do? Well, I mean, we do try and say get him on his side because if he's on his front, that's going to. I don't know, I'm just... Yeah, I don't want to leave him on his front, because yeah, it's not good to be lying on his front. He can't breathe properly. It seems peaceful on his front, but at the same time, you don't. But I don't know. Can you get him on his side? If you try and move him, will he... Will he I bet I could. I bet I could when I'm off the phone, yeah. Right. Um, try and put him on his side. All yeah. right. Um, if he does wake up, just reassure him. Do you know what? I just think he's too smashed. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, that's why... I need to go and say Like, it's my boyfriend's so. son. Oh, yeah, I mean, like I say, if he has, try and get him on his side, because if he vomits, he'll choke on it, lying on his front. OK, then. And that's bad. Person there, that's what I think he's on. If anything, he's took coat, because I know him. Right, but, yeah, I mean, try and get him on his side for me. Uh, All right, then. No matter what, don't give him anything to eat or drink, because if he has taken anything else, he can react to it, yeah? All right, then. Um, you have any problems or his breathing changes or anything like that, make sure everything is straight away, yeah? Okay then, thank you. Right, no, no worries, thank you. All right, thank you, thank Cheers. you, bye. Bye. Around 45 minutes after this call is made, of course, as you've just heard, the emergency services weren't in a rush to get there, and around that time they didn't arrive. To this though, Emma runs out in the street and shouts, he's dead, he's dead, he's been fighting with bouncers. It was then another call was made to emergency services, and of course this time the ambulance and the police rush to the scene. When asked what happened, Emma would instantly try and start to cover her tracks, telling them various things. Again, you've already heard one of them saying that he'd been fighting with bouncers, but she didn't mention that James had been stabbed. While she must have thought that she came off as genuine, People who were at the scene said that she indicated a lack of distress and there was no real urgency in seeking help for James. This is what would happen when police arrived a short while later. What's happened? It's been right, by we, come, of it. we come home yeah. and did had a fight in, outside Reynard. Yeah. Oh, but he seemed fine. And then as soon as he come out here, he was he, he, losing the consciousness. Me, going. Right. He was like, babe, you're fine. And then like, we dragged him inside, yeah. didn't we, thinking yeah. he was unconscious. Right. So, so we dragged him inside. Right. And then, like, basically, I just, he was breathing heavily, oh, no. but he was still alive. And then, like, I noticed he was starting, I basically, I don't know, just getting back. So you've all been out tonight? No, I've no, been at home. You've I, been I, out with him? I don't care right now, just get the boy. Listen, back. listen, we need to find out what's happened. I don't care as long as he's alive. What it is? Yeah, come on. I'm going to get some tape and seal it off. Just get some tape. Sorry. No, they're working on him in there. This is the girlfriend. I'm the neighbour. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I was just giving you a resuscitation for... It means they take until they came. Okay, do you know what's happening? I want my boy! I went to pick my mate from the middle edge. I came, let's say, 45 minutes ago. And I see him lying on the floor. James! Have you got my torch? Right, we need to clear here. We've got blood here. Watch where you are because you're standing this in blood. Be over here, Come over yeah, here. okay. Well, 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 watch where you're going because I'm going to tape it off. I'm just going to get some tape. Yeah. <laughs> just going to get some tape. 
When police arrived at the scene, Emma still misled them after she failed to mention that James had been stabbed. But eventually she would go on to be arrested and charged in connection with this incident. And at a trial in November of 2016, she was found guilty of murder and had been sentenced to 17 years in prison. In December of 2019 though, at a court of appeals hearing, the judges claimed that the trial was quote unsafe because evidence about Emma's mental health was not put before the trial jury. You see her lawyers argued that she had been suffering from diminished responsibility at the time of the killing and in more detail it's believed that she suffered from emotionally unstable personality disorder which came from Emma suffering from childhood trauma. This was due to her being exposed to domestic violence as a kid, being bullied at school and having parental neglect. On top of this, it was also argued that Emma was unable to participate at her original trial because of her improvised verbal reasoning skills and mental health conditions and social communication difficulties. Adding all this together, the appeal judges quashed the original sentence back in January of 2020 and a retrial was to be heard, which is recently just wrapped up. In her original trial, it was claimed that she had killed James in self-defense, and this time she continued that claim, saying that she hit out at James in the kitchen when he grabbed her by the throat, and at that point, she picked up the knife from the sink to defend herself. But in court, prosecutors put forward the claim that she had been the aggressor in this relationship and previous ones, and one incident that is reported on is where allegedly she threw a vacuum cleaner at a previous partner, which earned her the name Mike Dice again in reference to the boxer Mike Tyson but Emma denied this from ever happening. Emma gave evidence in court though claiming that she had been the victim of violence and claimed that only a couple of weeks before James was killed the pair ended up having an argument and James lashed out at her kicking her in the head. She also claimed that James had been abusive all throughout the relationship claiming that his personality changed after he started going to the gym and using steroids. Although when checking for drugs in his system when he died, it showed that he'd been taking cannabis, cocaine and alcohol and there was no traces of steroids in his system. What should be noted though is that Emma does have previous criminal convictions that were told to the court. One was for kicking and pulling the hair of another woman and another for cutting a woman's face with a glass when she was drunk. It was also heard that Emma had dragged a woman out of a home by her hair in January of 2016, which she explained was because the woman would not leave a house. When Emma was arrested a day after the killing, the court was told about a statement she made to Leicestershire police, where she claimed that she had been kicked by James and believed the assault would escalate. She said that this was happening in the kitchen, if you remember, and that's why she stabbed him with a steak knife in a moment of panic because she was trying to defend herself. She said, due to the way he was holding my throat, I could not see what was in the sink. I picked up the first thing which came to hand, which was a steak knife with a plastic handle. The knife was in my hand and I hit out once. It happened so quickly, I cannot be sure exactly how it happened. I didn't mean to harm him, I just wanted him to get off me. I didn't notice any injury or blood and thought he was drunk. I then called 999, but I still thought he was drunk and playing up. She also gave evidence in court which pretty much repeated these claims and says the arguing was over James accusing her of being unfaithful. When giving evidence though, James's mother had to leave the courtroom after shouting at Emma and she called her a liar. After a retrial at Birmingham Crown Court though, after the jury were given the option to convict Emma of manslaughter, she would be found guilty of murder once again and is due to be sentenced on the 29th of March 2021, which would be at the end of this month. And so a pretty sad story where a father with children has gone on to lose his life over what it seems is a drunken argument and again Emma losing control and going on to stab him in the heart. I think what's so sad about this situation though is although I didn't mention it in court the pathologist did say he probably had a couple of minutes to survive before eventually going on to die. Well in those couple of minutes an ambulance could have potentially arrived at the scene had Emma gone on to say that she stabbed James but of course that wasn't the case because as you've seen she waited for whatever reason 
for them to come and then eventually he died and i couldn't imagine what the family had to go through to go through this retrial again just for her to get convicted of murder and more specifically james's brother who actually went out there to help and he must have felt so helpless to find out that he had been stabbed and he didn't do anything to help out of course that isn't his fault though because at the end of the day he didn't know anything had happened to him and again this all boils down to emma not telling people for whatever reason but yeah i just do want to pay my respects and say rest in peace to james i do know near enough five years has gone by now but of course this is going to be fresh for the family because they've just recently had to go to court again for the retrial so again i just do want to pay my condolences to them at this very hard time but let me know what you guys think of this down in the comment section below give the video a little like and if you want the latest drill street and music news out of the uk be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell it's been your boy ape hunt joe and i'm out